And tell me, how, how do adult patients with AML do? Because I'm pediatrics trained, so I know how the kids do, but. Sure, um, so um, AML in adults, by and large, the median age is in their 60s. So most patients in their 60s are unable to receive the standard intensive therapies. But when you really look at their long-term outcomes, patients who are over the age of 65 do very poorly. In fact, nothing has changed in their long-term survival in the last three decades in that age group as opposed to the younger patients where their survivals are very good. They're about 40 to 50%. Tell me about how kids do with AML. Well, we do very well. So about 30 years ago, it's probably in the same landscape where you were uh, right now. It's about 20% survival rates for these kids. But only in the last 10, 15 years, we've actually gotten that number up to 60%. All right, so now it's different when you come for a diagnosis. You talk about, you know, right, what are you going to go to college? You know, what are your plans later in life? And we keep those hopes alive, right? So they can have something to look forward to as they're going through this intensive chemotherapy. I think we have the same problem we do, uh, as you do. We do a great job of clearing all of the disease cells in the body. There's almost no detectable AML, and that's like 90% of the patients. But we know that they do recur, so about 30 to 40% of the patients will have recurrence. So it's got to be something about that stem cell, the one cell, the one or two cells that are actually making all these AML cells. And I think that's where we need to improve for the next 30 years or so to figure out how to get rid of that to actually make the overall survival much higher. Adult patients generally have a multitude of medical problems. So when you're looking at the newly diagnosed patient with AML, they tend to have their comorbidities. So you're looking at the physical characteristics of the patient and also looking at the biology of the disease of AML. So by and large, patients with adult AML are not offered intensive therapy due to their other coexisting medical conditions. And when you look at the disease biology, these patients tend to have aggressive features at a higher rate, such as complex cytogenetics or less favorable chromosomal abnormalities. And up to a third of the patients also have a secondary AML, meaning they had a pre-existing blood or bone marrow condition that has over time emerged and transformed to become AML. It's, it's those disease biology characteristics that makes it challenging for these patients, in particularly adult AML patients, to receive therapy and have good outcomes. Children are very resilient. I think people have this perception of them as really frail and vulnerable, which is more a term I would actually apply to patients in your population, the grandfathers and grandmothers. But children, the best thing about treating children is that they will listen to you. They listen to the parents, they listen to you. And if you think it's necessary for them, they will tough it out and they will do whatever is necessary for it. Obviously, there are a lot of concerns. And so it's a emotional, a lot of it is emotional, disturbances because of all of the emergencies that come on while they're in this hospital and can't do a thing and can't go outside and play, which is one of the biggest things they are that they complain about. As we understand the biology of the disease, there have been a number of targeted agents that are being studied in AML. In fact, there have been a few approvals recently in AML. These are, while these are important for patients with those specific abnormalities or mutations, if you will, there's other applications, so these agents can be combined potentially with the available therapy or low intensive therapy and to have better outcomes. So the field has changed tremendously and there are several other new agents that are being studied. And we're equally excited about these agents coming out. Our hope is that we can actually reduce the amount of chemotherapy we give at the new agents, keep the same level of anti-AML activity, but reduce toxicity greatly. And so we're very excited about the future.